This is A to Z with Mark Zinno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, where today I tell you, I wasn't ready to do this yet. Welcome in. We are live here on this Tuesday. We appreciate you guys making ADZ part of your everyday single sports listen right here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On ATL. Of course, follow me at Mark Zinno, M A R K Z I N N O. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us there as well. And we appreciate all the love and support you guys have joined us in this venture here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. We got some brave stuff to get to as they lose last night. We'll get to that coming up for the end of the show. Plus, a great conversation with Will McFadden of the Falcoholic, a deep dive into this offseason, dovetailing some of the stuff we talked about yesterday with Kyle Pitts and a player who may not be here one week from today. That is all coming up here on A to Z. But I want to start today with Deshaun Watson because, as I said, I wasn't really ready to do this yet. Like, th there's more news that's going to come out, and I wanted to do this in totality um, and really kind of give my my thoughts and feelings on Deshaun and, and, and where we are. But with HBO Real Sports doing their piece tonight, and having two of the accusers speak publicly on the record, um, not in a courtroom, but publicly on a record, giving their story tonight on HBO Real Sports it is going to sort of at least change a little bit of the perception of this whole thing. Um, and, and I don't know that things can look worse for Deshaun Watson at this point. I mean, he's got 22 different women accusing him of something. We had, from the Sports Illustrated stories, very specific graphic details of the things that went on, according to these women. And uh, Deshaun Watson even admitted that a woman left a massage crying. So I don't know how much worse anybody thinks this can look, because objectively, this is bad. It, lo it looks bad all around for Deshaun. Now, the NFL and the Cleveland Browns don't care. And, and that's their prerogative. I'm not going to sit here and, and play moral judge on them. Um, and there are certain people who are mad at the Falcons for going after Deshaun Watson. I'm not going to play moral judge on them. Uh, that, that's, for me, I, I don't want to get into that discussion. I don't want to get in that conversation because everybody's moral code is different. We, we all want to live under this presumption that we all share some sort of similar or same moral code. No, we, we clearly don't. That's not the America we live in. That's not the world that we live in at this point in time. So... Uh, I think that notion is sort of silly and idealistic, and it doesn't really hold a lot of water. Um, so I'm not going to get mad at a business for doing something that is in the best interest of their business. The Cleveland Browns are a business. The Atlanta Falcons are a business. If they wanted to employ Deshaun Watson, that's their prerogative. If I don't like it, I can choose not to patronize that business. It's that simple. And anybody who made those decisions, fine. Good for you. Like, I'm not mad at you. It, if that's going to change your fandom or that's going to alter what you think, absolutely your prerogative. However, Deshaun Watson and what is going to happen in this civil trial here is going to be a very interesting case for the NFL because they haven't come to a conclusion yet on what they're going to do from a punishment standpoint. Um, you know, the NFL and Roger Goodell and the way they arbitrate these things, there's no rhyme or reason to it. And what they choose to do with Deshaun Watson here is, is going to be very telling. Now, remember, you got to go back. Obviously, the Ben Roethlisberger thing that happened in Milledgeville, Georgia, I think it was Milledgeville, so the name of the city. He got six games for that. No charges, never arrested, uh, never went to a civil trial. Now, he may have paid the, the young woman off and it went away very quickly. This was obviously a different time years and years and years ago. Um, when when that had happened and just the, the culture around, you know, sexual harassment, sexual assault and, and you know, violence against women crimes are, are were completely different. So that 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 happened. And then, of course, Ezekiel Elliott got six games for pulling down a woman's top briefly uh, or, you know, she pulled it back up. Uh, he got six games for that. He was never arrested. He was never charged. Uh, there were there was no court case. And, and again, I, I don't remember if he paid her any sum of money or whatever to sort of make it go away. But he got arrested. I would tell you when it's 22 different 
women accusing him. Uh, and who knows how many of these women have actually met with the NFL and are willing to speak with the NFL uh, about what they saw. Um, if the NFL only comes out with six games, that's going to be quite below board from what we've seen them do. Again, there is no rhyme or reason to any of this, and there's no way to figure out exactly what Roger Goodell and the NFL are thinking. But I know he sat out all of last year because the Houston Texans wanted him to, and they weren't going to, you know, they paid him essentially, but, you know, they were willing to eat the money. But basically they said, hey, you're not playing for us. Um, and now he may have to sit out again. Like if it's a year suspension, does anybody feel like that is too much? Just based off of what we saw from other people, based off of what we've seen from other folks who were suspended, right? And other suspensions out there. Again, no rhyme or reason to the way this goes, but that's sort of what it is. And I, I don't want to say too much more because honestly, again, this is one of those things where there's going to be more information that comes out. I'll have more reaction tomorrow after the real sports piece comes out tonight. And we'll probably dive into it a little bit deeper based off of what I've what, what we see tonight and how it goes. But I think really, ultimately, that is something that um, is the initial reaction in my mind. If it's not upwards of 12 games to a year, um, I'm curious as to know what the NFL saw in their investigation. And look, we know, full disclosure, the NFL does not give a rip about women. They don't. They've said so over and over again. They want their money and they want their fan base and they want their patronage, but they don't really care about violence. It's, it's not something that they actually give a rip about. So let's not pretend that they do for one moment. Uh, so if they go in a different direction and they make a shorter suspension, eh, so be it. But I would tell you that that would be fairly inconsistent with what they've done before. All right, coming up next, we'll turn our attention to the Atlanta Falcons. Will McFadden of the Falcon Hall going to join us right here on A to Z on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast, make sure you search Locked On Sports Atlanta.